Hi there, my name is Jeffrey Wei, and let's see how we can go about getting set up with a Require.js application using Backbone, which is non-AMD, which can be a little confusing sometimes. And then we also need to figure out some solution for dependency management. And for that, we will use Bower, which was created by some of the guys over at Twitter. All right, let's get started. As always, we're starting with an absolutely empty project. So we need to do a couple things first. I'm gonna create a new app folder, and this is where our entire application is going to go. So within here, we need just a little bit of a directory structure. I'm gonna create a scripts folder, and within scripts, why don't we also create a folder for vendor frameworks and libraries? So that's where jQuery and Backbone and underscore will go. Next, we of course need an index.html file, so we'll go ahead and set that up right now, and I will go ahead and paste in just a little snippet here. Okay, and this is your standard beginning HTML. You have your doc type, you have a couple meta tags. That's all we need. The next step is because we're going to be working with Bower, we need to install that. And we can do it through NPM, assuming you have Node.js installed. I've switched over to the terminal in my desktop and I'm going to CD into that require.js folder. And now we want to install both Node.js as well as Bower. And I'm going to install those globally. Once those have installed, we can start using Bower, and I can confirm that by running Bower-h for Bower help. Now I can do things like Bower install jQuery, and now if I come back, you'll see that it creates a components directory and pulls in that jQuery repo off of GitHub. But in this case, I don't really want the components folder. Instead, I'd rather install to the vendor directory. So it sounds like I need to create a Bower RC file. Now you can get all of this from the documentation for Bower. I just happen to know it. Within here, inside of an object, I'm going to specify that the directory to install to will be app scripts vendor. And that's it. So let's try it one more time. Bower install jQuery. And now you'll see if I open up the vendor directory that is working as we would hope. Excellent. Now in this case though, rather than doing it manually, Bower install backbone, Bower install underscore, why don't we instead create a new file called component.json. Now within here, this is similar to if you were building a Node.js app. We can just add a couple things, such as the name. I'll call it require.js starter. We will set the version, and I'm just gonna set it to 1.0. Next, I'm going to set the dependencies. And this is where I can specify for this application, what assets does it depend on? So in this case, think it depends on jQuery. Now we can specify a version number like that, or if we don't really care the latest version, we'll use null. I'm also gonna bring in backbone, underscore, and finally, require.js. Now there's one thing I wanna change here though. By default, underscore and backbone are not AMD compliant. They were at one point, but then that was pulled out. So that means we have to do a little bit of trickery to get those to work, or there are alternative versions called Backbone AMD, as well as underscore AMD. And the only difference is it's the exact same library, the latest version usually, but it will also set it up as AMD. And I'll show you how that works. So this looks good to me. Now that we have this component file, when I go back and run Bower install, it's going to read that file and install all of the necessary dependencies. So if I come back, take a look, there they are. Now, what I want you to look at real quickly is underscore, if I open up underscore JS and I scroll to the bottom, you'll see that this is what essentially underscore AMD sets up for us. It says, if type of define is a function and AMD is available on that define function, that means we are using AMD, in which case we want to define underscore and return the library. The same thing is going to be done to backbone AMD. If we want to take a look at that one real quickly, that will be near the top. There you go. You can see that's where it sets that up. Now this isn't necessary, but if you don't do that, you have to do a little more trickery within your main.js file. So I tend to prefer that even though it's not ideal. I think it works for most projects. All right, so now we have our dependencies set up. Let's go ahead and bring in require.js. So we've kept that in scripts, vendor, require.js, and the file name is require.js. Now, we also need to set up what is the main module here. Well, let's create that in a moment. We'll call it main.js. And while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and create that file. So what we've done here is we are loading require.js, and we're also going to activate the main.js module first. 
So we need to do a couple things. I need to set up some configuration options. And within here, let's set up the paths. The first one will be to jQuery, and that will be vendor jQuery, jQuery.js. And I will duplicate that twice. The next one will be underscore. And the final one will be backbone. And I just need to make one tweak. It should be underscore AMD is the folder name and backbone AMD. But the file name should be the same. Yes, they are. All right, so what we've done here is we've set up three paths. And that way I can say require backbone and it actually knows what the path to backbone will be. Now let's try it out. We need something to load. So maybe we wanna load maybe our main view or our app view. Let's do that now. I'll create a new folder for views and within it, we will do app.js. Let's go ahead and define a view. And this view will be a backbone view. So I'm gonna make sure I require backbone. And then we'll just say var app equals backbone.view.extend. And within here, let's do the initialize and I'm just going to log, woohoo. All right, and that looks good to me. So we've created our app backbone view. I'm going to return that from our little module here. And now within main.js, I can say, let's require views app. That will be aliased as app view. And then we will go ahead and boot that up. New app view. So let's go through this from top to bottom. Index.html loads. We come down to our script page and we load require.js. And then we immediately want to execute scripts slash main.js. This file will set up some common paths for us so we can do things like require backbone or underscore and things like that. Next, we say we want to require views app, which means we want to load this file. So we come to this file and this one says, well, I require backbone before I can execute anything. So we define a module. It will be named automatically. It requires backbone and then it sets that up. Then once that is fully loaded, we can reference the view as app view, and then I create a new app view. All right, let's try this out. Let's view it in the browser. Now here's a mistake I made. I sometimes do this. Notice that it's trying to load backbone.js.js, and I bet you saw this when you were watching. When we are specifying the paths, we actually don't want to specify the extension. So I will remove those. Now I will reload it one more time, and there you go, you get Wahoo. So now we are successfully working with require.js, and using AMD compliant versions of Backbone and Underscore. Now we wanna have a build process. So we have the included r.js file, and that's available to us because we did install require.js. If I say which r.js, you can see I do have that available to me. But first we need to set up some configuration options. So I'm gonna create a new folder for my build process. And within here, according to the instructions for r.js, I'm gonna create a new file called app.build.js. Now within here, and again, all of this, you don't have to memorize every bit of it. You can refer to the documentation and it will tell you what you need. The first thing that I need to do is specify the app directory. What is the main root URL essentially? Well, I am within a build folder, so I need to go up one. Next, what will be the base URL? And that means when we are importing scripts, what should we use as the base? Well, main.js is within the scripts folder. So we specify that as scripts. Uh, please note the base URL will be relative to your app directory. So this is essentially doing that, but we've already done it when we created the app dir property. Next, we need to specify the directory that we build to. So when we run build, it's going to copy all the files and create a new build directory. Where should that be and what should it be called? Well, let's go out of the build directory, out of the app directory, and we will call it dist, which is fairly common. Next, what is the main config file? And this means essentially where is main.js? Well, it's out of the build directory into scripts and we called it main. Next, we wanna know the name of the module that we are loading. Well, we call that main. So all this means is it's gonna go into main.js. It's going to figure out everything that it's importing. So in this case, it's importing views slash app. View slash app will import some things of its own. Of course, in a real world project, that'll get a little more complex, but ultimately that's going to merge all of those assets together into main.js. The final thing I wanna do is specify that when we optimize CSS, which required JS can do by the way, I'm going to do a standard optimization, which is just your standard, get rid of line breaks, get rid of comments, things like that. 
All right, that looks good to me. So now that we have this set up, let's try it out. I'm going to run r.js, and the configuration file is within app build app.build.js. Let's run it. And notice it's doing all of these optimizations. It's actually trying to optimize some of the assets that were installed through Bower, which isn't really necessary, but it's okay in this case. If you want, you can delete some of those extra directories that you don't need. And that's it, so it's done building. Let's see what it did for us. Well, if I close up the app directory, now we have a new disk directory, which is our build directory. If I open up index.html, it's the same thing here. But if I go into scripts, now main.js contains underscore, jQuery, and backbone. And you can see it's all been merged together there. But look at the very end, you can see, yeah, it is bringing in the main.js file. And if we come back and I just look for Wahoo, there it is. You can see it did pull that in. And that's, again, because we specified within build app.build. Let's go into the main file there. There we go. We did specify the module. And so it knew that it needed to grab all those dependencies and merge it into the exported main.js file. So what's nice about this is if I go ahead and preview the published directory, you'll see we still get Wahoo. But if I go into the network, Notice that we are pulling in require.js and main.js. And even if we wanted to, we could merge those together as well. Or if you're not using require.js at all, which you really wouldn't be in production if you're merging it all together, you can use a tool called Amend, which you can get on GitHub, which is sort of a condensed version. But that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. So if I go back into the previous version, let's go to network. Notice that because we're using backbone and underscore and jQuery, it had to make all of those HTTP requests for those assets. But then when we built it, it merged it all together. So it no longer has to do that. So we lower the number of requests we have to make and speed up the performance of our application. So then at this point, if you wanted to make it even easier on yourself, let's create a little build tool called build.sh. And all we're going to do is just grab that last command that we ran. I'll paste that in. And then if there's any cleanup you need to do, you can do that. So I don't really need a build directory within my production folder. So I could always remove with recursive force the dist build directory. And if you want to do anything else, so maybe you don't want build.txt. Well, maybe we get rid of it for production. CD into the dist directory. We'll remove the build folder, build.txt. And then maybe also script slash views, script slash models anything else you might have, collections, stuff like that. All right, so let's delete this and try it one more time and see what we get. This time, rather than running r.js, we're gonna try to go to app, build, build.sh, but that's not going to run. It's gonna give us permission denied. I need to make sure that I can execute that. So let's go ahead and run chmod x on that file, and now that should work. There we go. So now we called that file, and it's just going to execute these three commands right there. It's going to build it. It'll switch to the disk directory. It's going to remove some files for us, and then we'll be done. All right, that's finished. Let's take a look. Back into the disk directory. Now we have index.html. We got rid of the build file and the build directory. We want to make this as easy as possible to maybe email somebody or offer as a download, and they don't need to have access to those extra directories that really aren't necessary for being used in production. But now we have index.html, we have our scripts, everything looks good. So the final thing I want to show you is just a quick bit about CSS. Let's create a new folder called CSS, and within it we'll call it main.css. Now within here, you can have your standard code, and if you're not using a preprocessor, feel free to use imports as much as you want. So maybe we want to import some buttons. I'll go ahead and create that right now, buttons.css. And maybe we'll say border radius is 10 pixels. Now, generally with regular CSS, this is considered a bad practice, and that's because you will take a performance hit while it requests that file. But when you run this through the optimizer, Require.js knows to import all of these and merge them together. And that way for production, you're still ending up with one big file. So let's try that. This will all be done automatically because within build, app.build, we specified that we wanted to optimize the CSS and using the standard format. And there's a couple other options you could choose from. 
If you want to take a look at all of the options, go to the Require.js website, come down to Optimization, and then at the bottom, here's a link to an example build file, and it just has all of the various options that you can choose from. So notice that for Optimize CSS, there's three or four different options you could choose from. All right, let's go back and try this one more time now that we have some style sheets as well. There we go, after a few seconds, that's all finished. And one final time, let's go ahead and close everything. Open up the disk directory. Now if I go into CSS, within main.css, you can see it had the original and then it went ahead and imported any imports that we specified. And then if you want, you could always get rid of any other style sheets and you would do that through your build process in build.sh. All right, so there's a lot of steps, but once you kind of do it for a while, it becomes second nature, but easily, I'm happy to admit that when you're first getting started, this is very confusing. All of these different JSON and configuration files and build files, it's a lot to take in at first. And that's why I created this tutorial as well as a repo on GitHub that you can refer to when you're first getting started with this. And it should have all of the instructions for setting it up and what each page does. And that does it for today. My name is Jeffrey Way, and you can find me and more of the best tutorials on the web at net.touchplus.com.